Yes, we are there, Capital Extra Evenings, with myself, Omar, two very important people inside right now. And I think they're bringing that real, kind of real music approach to the UK scene right now. RD Cat Burns in the building! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before we proceed with the music conversation, it's a tattoo chat right now. Yeah. I've, I've noticed Cat's got bare tattoos. How many tattoos you got? 27. How many you got? Was it, what did we? What, what's the number that we posted? Was it? Uh, I think it, I feel like it landed on like thirty-five or something. So yeah. whatever. That you got thirty-five? No, no, no. Like oh, as in she's oh. got to this, yeah. So I've so quick match 27, 28, 29, 34, 1, 42, 3, 4, You got eight. Yeah, it might even be less than that. Mine are kind of like pieces rather than different ones. But yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple. And talk, talk me through this one in your hand. <laughs> um, yeah. So we was out in Australia, and it was just kind of early. Where was we? I well, can't remember what part of Australia it was. That whole thing was just a blur, you know. <laughs> I feel like it was Brisbane, which is like the sunnier side of Australia. And it was kind of earlier hours in the morning. All me and my crew were planning to get the same tattoo and that because we thought it was a great idea at the time. So oh, you had just come out of the club like, yeah, let's get no, a tattoo. No, no, no. I weren't like just come out of the club. It was like we kind of toured, we partied all night. We still ain't really slept. And then it was kind of earlier hours in the morning and we had to just carry on with the day. It was like, and we planned to get this tattoo and that was basically the only time we could do it anyway. Mm. So we was all still kind of just, yeah, all still buzzing from the night before and that and just done one of the second to last show. Went there and I was meant to have it the same as them. We was all meant to have it across the back of like our pinky finger. Of course you were different. Litty, litty, have Litty for really. So me, one of my other best friends, my PA and um, yeah, my cameraman. And then I just thought, nah, I'm going to be special. And I got it slapped across the front of my hand. And also it is so much darker and thicker and, sure? uh, and above the skin than any of my other tattoos. Like if you like, it's actually a completely different color ink, which is kind of frustrating. But Did, did you think there's like a low key competition with you lot with these tats? Know what I mean, like who's really? gonna get? Nah. I, I, so. I disagree, you know. When you said 27, I was like, right, I need Damn, more time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. But ours are different. I'm like, I like more like patchwork. Yeah. Just like little, little drawings just all over my body. Ardy's just on a mad one. Like, yo, get me it. This is yeah. massive. Do you know what? I've got one that I actually, I, you know, let me not even say that I'm ready. There's one that I'm thinking about getting removed. I'm I not going to say which one it is. I'm not going to we'll say We'll talk about I, that. I know which one you, you know, I'm, you, you probably do know which one it is. Give us a hint. No, 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 I can't. Come on, <laughs> my tell you what it is, it'll be hard broken so cat i want to start with you you used to play um you used to play basketball right when i was like nine yeah this is a mad fact for both i didn't know you. this and actually g check me and correct me if this is wrong but two basketballs yeah see the hoop can fit side by side in that hoop so technically four basketballs can fit inside the hoop at one time what how do you feel I don't even know what you just said to me. Yeah, yeah, neither. <laughs> I, I need to repeat that again. So yeah, basically, like, so, so short is, yeah, I was trying to be dramatic. Four basketballs can fit inside that hoop where you shoot the basketball. That hoop, four of them can fit in there at one time, side by side. No, they can't. Though. I promise you. No, they two can't. Two basketballs there. Two basketballs. So two basketballs next to each other can fit in a hoop. So there and there. What's there? What's that? So two, there's the hoop. That's hmm. the hoop. Mm -hmm. Two basketballs fit in side by side. That's how big the hole is on the hoop yeah and then that means that two can sit that way as well you have no okay. idea what i'm on about <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, <Sick. man. laughs> that, that was my warmer question isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes i agree listen man uh, let's just let's just get in and talk about the music i mean so your your relationship the friendship that's been kind of built what i've seen on socials it's like you guys are really close when did you um when did you first meet we first met at studio via a, um, a writing camp I think yeah it was my writing camp I'd been out of the creative process for a while mm -hmm. but also a little bit out of love with it because obviously we'd done we'd, we'd had like obviously huge success and I'm not complaining about anything obviously I don't want to sound like a martyr or like I'm moaning but um it just felt like a little bit repetitive in terms of like the process and a little less passionate and so yeah in this writing camp i said to my team one i didn't want to intentionally like try and write any hits i didn't want to like okay let's go for this beat because it's the popping sound at the moment and we're going to push that i'm going to have a tiktok dance for it and da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. didn't want to go down that lane but also i wanted to create music remember i'm a big music fan i'm not just a rap fan like my playlist is so vast so i wanted to just 
create music and songs that could have a message and longevity and you can play them yeah. however many years down the line and a lot of songs I listened to growing up used to be like singing on the hooks and verses and just like big it felt like big heartwarming good music you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so that was a lane I wanted to go down and then yeah between our two teams a link up just kind of happened naturally and that was the first piece of music this home for my heart mm. was the first piece of music that was created in that entire writing camp and it was the song that we led with afterwards so. yeah and wasn't your mum like a big fan yeah my mum my mum calls you her spirit animal Oh, wow, that's really cute. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. Is the spirit animal a cat or is it cat? No, no, it's it's, it's, it's cat. cat. It's cat. Cat. Wow, that's powerful. Man. How do you how do you feel about that? That's very sweet. I mean, have you I, met? No, I haven't. I haven't met. She actually met. messages you all the time. I, I've I've been told oh. for you to <laughs> to try and get you to follow her afterwards because she oh she gosh, genuinely. Cat, how are you not you following know. the mumsy, man? <laughs> no, 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 it's my fault because I'm always like, mum, like she she's not gonna see the message, mum, like. Just chill. Do you know what? I'm just, uh, not to toot my own horn, but the mums, they love me. I've got a lot of mums. She's fans. proper obsessed with you. Yeah. I can imagine. You're, you're the type to come into the yard, you take your shoes off, and you're just polite. Hello, Mrs. Flanagan, where can I? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Kat, what was it like working with, um, working with RD when you're on the camp and in the studio? It was good. I mean, I when I went into the session, there was like 74 million people in the room. <laughs> and obviously I work very differently. Like I'm more like there's another writer and then a producer. So there's like maximum three people in the room with me. Um, so going into this session, it was like a whole heap of people. And I was like, uh... and we both have ADHD, but our ADHDs show up in different ways. So mm. for me, I, that, that many people was just like, I can't, that's just too much. Mm. So I had to go into like another room and then... And then we wrote the song there and um, it was just, a, it was a fun process because you always like have pre, -con like whatever the phrase is, pre something something ideas mm. about like how people write or how things work. And like, it was just interesting to see how Ardy works because yeah. he literally just, he was just there just like, so and then you'd be like, oh, I've, I've done it. And we were like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've done it now. And I was like, huh? How did you just do that? So do you kind of step in, feel an instrumental and then you're just in flow state on your phone? Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't even. So a lot of other like rappers, for example, I've worked with, they'll like find the flow first and they'll do like mumble and just say random gibberish down the mic and everything. I can't do that. Mm. I, I'm a definitely a writer. Like before I even done music, I used to like I was good at English and I used to write poems and I've, I've always been like a writer. So um, yeah, that's my process of doing that. And obviously, like Kat was saying, I've normally. Because of the kind of music I usually make, and you've got like flowers on a twist and it's bouncy and it's fun, I have to have 70 million people in the room because that's how I know if the song's good or not. I'm like a massive attention validation seeker, innit? Right. So right. I'll be like, I'll, I'll spit a bar and I'll, I'll say certain bars and that, and I'll spit the bar and kind of like look around, and if no one gasses the bar <laughs> up, then I'm not writing that bar down. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was a different. Definitely a different process of just like trying to submerge myself into the beat. But yeah, like you say, once I'm there, it's just like. My fingers just yeah. start going on my phone, and that's it. Like I've, I don't think I've ever taken longer than a session to produce any of the music that you've heard. Mm, by the way, when we say moment. when we say seventy million, how many are we actually talking? Oh no, like, there was like uh, I want to say there was like eight or nine people. Oh, there was, okay. there was probably no, no, there was, and there was probably more. But bearing in mind, it's the size of the room it's small is less than half of this. Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of people in there, and obviously a lot of people. I don't want to say unnecessary because that sounds mean, but like a lot of them are just, like, man, them are just there and yeah, yeah, just yeah, bring yeah, people yeah. to the studio I hear and that, stuff. Man. So it's, it's mad for me, and I like this dynamic because both of you have kind of come up at like similar times. Would you say, what advice would you kind of give for other people that are on the come up, which are really hungry for it, and just from your experience? Mm. Um, I would say utilize social media as much as you can. Like, it's giving. Social media is giving a lot of artists control, creative control. So I would just definitely say utilize the things that you have at your fingertips. Like if you're lucky enough to be around other creative, like-minded people, use them. Like mm. if your friend is a videographer, ask them to film something for you. Like try and just use what you've got. Um, and yeah, just use social media. That's been my, that's been my greatest help. Mm. Yeah, what about yourself, bro? Um, I'd say obviously keep 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 that hunger and obviously if, if, if you try it's, it's rich coming from me to be like oh like just chill but also just 
appreciate and soak in what you've got and look after the fan base that you have and mm. that will attract more people to want to be a part of something. I feel like when you when your movement and you feel like you're a part of something, it grows organically a lot quicker because you're not like, okay, I've got these lot here, but I want all of these lot over here. And so then by the time you come back to these lot, it's like, okay, well, you left us and we was rocking with you. So right, now we're right. gone and you've got them new people over there. So just try and build with the fan base that you have. Do you, do you see that like traction with uh, the connection that you're making with those fans? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like... I, I'm always the believer of like the best way to, to grow your fan base and, and have a devout fan base is to consistently release music and to give them more and more and more. So I think the more music you release, the more aspects of your artistry you can show to them. Um, and then they'll feel more of a connection. Like if you're only putting out songs that you think will be this massive hit, then sometimes the connection, you, you're not building that connection with them because they're just like, oh, I've heard you everywhere, yeah. but I don't really know what It's like a recyclable about. fan base. Yeah. Mm, That's like, yeah. And again, like, not like I fell into that category, but because a lot of my songs were like the big chart topping ones, that was part of my thought process of like yeah. going back to the drawing board, connecting with fans, because it's like how many listeners that I have are fans of just flowers or just Oliver Twist compared to fans of RD. Obviously, I had both, but it was a it was a thing that I had to weigh up and decide what I wanted to grow more of. So. Yeah, it's really interesting you say that because I've noticed with this new track, like I introduced you guys, it's real music, mm -hmm. and especially for yourself, it's like you're really showing a vulnerable side of yourself, and you're and you're you know talking real lyrics. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm not not to discredit your lyrics before because it's always been real and it's always come from an RD place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just a new side of you. Hundred percent. I feel like do you know what it is. I feel like it comes from a little bit more of a of a Riley place <laughs> because I'm not saying that oh, I'm I'm not authentic to myself and that RD isn't me and that it's just, mm. I'm putting on my persona. That's not the case. But there's just that more vulnerable side to me. That more realistic having feelings and emotions and it's not all just hey and parties yeah, all the yeah, time yeah. and litty for really and all of that stuff like it's i'm a real human being too do you know mm. what I mean? so. yeah for real how long did it take to make the track because obviously you've blitzed your your, <laughs> lyri your lyrics out in a quick 10 seconds what about yourself how did you then you went into that room you took time to you know write how did it then come across uh, in the studio um it was quite easy to be fair like it was interesting because we like, in the two different rooms, we worked the way that we normally work. So, like, he was just sat writing. Bouncing and then for people. So. I, was, I was in the other room, and we literally just had the guitar, played the same chords, slowed it down, actually wanted to work out what we wanted to say. Um, and then that bit kind of just, it started to flow quite easy. And then once we had the hook, then Ardy came back in, heard it, and then that gave him more direction on, like, where to take yeah, I was going to say, yeah, because there was a couple different ideas I had for the verses and stuff. And so you hear the, just leave me when you need and if needs be. That was after the hook was there. And also that was going to be part of the first verse. And there was going to be like a 32 for the first verse compared to what you hear now. It's like a lot, it's like a 16 and then an 8 and stuff. Mm. So yeah, that definitely. We were just kind of bouncing off each other, I feel like. Yeah. Was definitely in and out of both rooms as well. So Yeah, yeah. man. I want to do a little lyric bre breakdown. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Adi. Yeah. Go on. Um, been a while since I was stuck in some hard times, but the times are still hard. Just a tip, just a different type of hard, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of people think that they achieve this certain level of success, and all their problems just kind of shoo, disappear. You know, how would you kind of relate to that with your experience? I mean, Biggie said it the best, didn't it? Mm. More money, more problems, and all of that. Yeah. I mean, because. It, you just have different kinds of stresses because, and everything's relative. So like, you can't, and that's why I'll never like disregard when I'm speaking to like younger fans or, or younger people and stuff. I'll never disregard a younger person's feelings or stress because that 13, 14 year old, whether they're stressed out about something that you deem very small mm. in their world, that is everything is peak right now. Like life is peak, isn't it? Yeah. So same way back then, I'm look. I look back at things I used to stress about when times were tough and I didn't have no money and I'd stress about X, Y, and Z. And certain stresses I had back then compared to certain stresses I have now, like I've got a mortgage, like I've, I've, I'm the head of my family, like I'm 20 years old. Like mm. there's, there's a lot of other stresses that I have now that I thought, I'll hold that stress over this stress any day. But I might not because when that, if I had that stress now, it's, it's all relative because yeah. it's just emotions and chemicals and feelings and stuff in your brain. Yeah, it's real so it's true, like you know. Time, times are still hard and everybody's still struggling. You're always going to have problems that you're going to face. I don't feel like 
unless you're like one of these very... Do you know who the only person I say I feel like genuinely has no stress in his life? Go on. Fraser T. Smith. Have you met him? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is Fraser got the most no stress? Zen, peaceful guy I've ever met in my I just feel like he has no problems and he lives like away in the stick somewhere. Yeah. There's no signal there. And like you take like you, he doesn't shake hands and he hugs you and everything. But unless you're like one of them people that like you're deciding to live a very blissful content life of like no social media no phone and you and you connect and you be one with earth and you're like quite one with nature because that's how human brains are at their most then when, yeah. you're, when you're one with the earth then you're always gonna have stresses and stuff that's bro. it man and i think you said it perfectly it's almost like you're and it's never inevitably problems are gonna come of course it's just like disconnecting from them and watching them go by and yeah. not getting so entangled in them you know uh cat as well i've um i've been grinding so hard no home for my heart is it like a relationship grind or a musical grind? It's more just like musical grind, like, and then for anyone listening, it's just kind of like you're working hard. Like, I think, I think for me, the hook is like it's it's any of your loved ones feeling like they don't see enough of you or get enough of you, mm. and you're kind of like. I'm here, but I have a lot to do and life is very stressful at the moment and I feel like I'm everywhere at once and it's a lot for me. Um, and it's kind of one of those ones where you're kind of, you are you understand where they're coming from, but you're also like, but it's it's actually very intense for me yeah. right now. And yeah, there's there's like, a lot going on. Just leave me. Just yeah. leave Got me. Got what you need and it needs to be. Yeah. Get me. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>